defense information will be broadcast at 640. West of the Rockies, you're on the air. Hello. Y2K, how can we prepare? Stop a few of their machines and radios. Throw them into darkness for a few hours. We are fighting for our lives. My family must survive. Boom. For five years, thousand gallons of gas, air filtration, water filtration. Coming at you from the frozen tundra that is East Central Alberta, Canada. Streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Rumble, and Odyssey. Welcome back to the workshop where we create community, find freedom, promote preparedness, and share success. I'm Toolman Tim. Today is May the 6th, 2023. And this is episode 300, milestone 300 of the workshop podcast. How the hell is everyone out there? All my fellow delinquents, great to have you. It's great to be back in the workshop studio, if for only about three weeks until we head to Washington again, but it's great to be back. There's something comforting about being back in the regular old surroundings. So let's get the announcements out of the way, <clears throat> and then we'll jump into today's show. It's going to be a fun one. First off, like I mentioned, in, what is it, three weeks, 20 days, Becky and I leave for the Thrivalist Fair in Addy, Washington. So that event is May 28th and 29th. You can get tickets at Thrivalists, that's T-H-R-I-V-A-L-I-S-T-S dot org. 50 bucks for the weekend for a family. I do believe that's how it works. And for my fellow Canadians, if you want to go down across the border, also great news because uh, coming the other way, the going what is it, Americans? Anyway, the borders are going to be restriction-free as of May 11th, which is awesome. Anyway, uh, going there, it's going to be a great time. I would love to see you. We're having a workshop get-together, uh, I believe. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's the, the evening in the middle. I th this is a Sunday and Monday event, I think. Let me see if I can figure this out for you right quick while we're talking. 28th and 29th. So yes, so the evening of the 28th, we're going to have a workshop I don't know what you want to call it, fireplace, fireside chat. A whole lot of us are going to be hanging around. Anybody who shows up from the workshop, I have some special exclusive secret swag that you won't get to see until you get there. It's only going to be handed out to uh, workshop members who meet up in person with me at some point this summer. So at Thrivalist, that'll be the first one. It's going to be exciting. Who do we get in here so far? Oh, one step closer. How are you? Aaron from uh, Two Chicks Homestead. Always love seeing you. Strong Roots Resources, otherwise known as Carrie Brown, who is absolutely incredible with permaculture and uh, land design. Miss him already, but it's good to see you. Chris Dixon, just saw him two days ago. We made a whirlwind trip, stopped into his town on the way back through. We had 15, 20 minutes to shoot the shit and have a coffee in the Tim Hortons parking lot. Oh, it was good to see you, brother. So that's the first. Now, uh, since I haven't been on here, I haven't been able to mention our sponsors for a little while. So I figured I'd want to give some love to my brother, Joel, whom I just met up with in person at LFTN. I already miss him as well. Introduced me uh, to the joys of a couple of his cigars, which were uh, exceptional. Let's put it that way. So anyway, if you're looking to get a verbal kick to the ass once in a while, and it's not just about attack dogs or personal protection dogs, sorry, it's about building the life you want to live. That dude is an incredible speaker. I hadn't heard him speak since last September at Prepper Camp. He was good then. He was on fire at LFTN. So give him a big hug from the workshop. Go over to Fortress K9. Make sure you listen to the Protection Dog podcast. And our other podcast sponsor is my good friend, Amy Dingman of A Farmish Kind of Life. If you're not listening to her podcast, you're definitely wrong because she's one of the ones who inspired me to podcast. I listened to her long before I ever launched this. And she's just an awesome inspirational lady. So give her some love as well. If you're not, I'm sure most of you already listened to her, but if you're looking to fill out or round out your podcast listening, give her a go. So finally, today's tool. Uh, this is, today's tool is the EMP Shield, guys. EMP Shield, you know the story. They reached out to me quite a while ago, sent me a product. I said, I'm not going to endorse this or talk about it until I get enough information and do enough research on it to know. So no matter what you want to think about EMPs, anything else, EMP Shield is one of the best surge protector lightning arresters on the market. 
with a $20,000 guarantee. I stand behind them. Plus, if you grab the link from today's description, you'll save 50 bucks on their product. So with that, guys, it's great to be back. So what am I drinking this evening? Well, uh, picked up a few bottles in the States that either I can't get in Canada or they'd be prohib prohibitively expensive. So this evening, it's uh, Henry McKenna, aged 10 years, bottled and bond. Uh, it was barreled, uh, 2012, October 17th, 100 proof. Really good sipping on ice this evening. Cheers. Just saw Hunter over in the workshop group said that the fireflies are out. I wish we got those here. We don't get to see them very often. Okay, so let's get the announcements out of the way first. So number one, guys, it's awesome. This is episode 300. <sighs> if you go back and listen to some of them earlier, actually, I wouldn't recommend listening to probably the first 25 or 30. I would say the real, the spiritual episode number one was when I had Joseph Mills on as my first guest, which was awesome. And he's a good buddy, keep up all the time. But if you ever stumble across this podcast in the future and you want to get started, hey, I won't begrudge you if you want to go back to episode number one, but all I can say is it's come a long way, baby, in 300 episodes. And it's because of all my fellow delinquents in the workshop community. All right. So first off, let's get the bad news out of the way. Not the bad news. Well, okay. So you guys heard my intro this evening. Welcome to the workshop podcast, episode number 300. So first off, what I got to tell you is this will be the last episode of the workshop podcast. So I want to let that sink in for just a minute. It's been crazy. It's been busy. However, you're probably like, Tim, what the hell are you talking about? I hope I didn't scare anybody out there. So I want to show you guys something. Just hang on one second. So as of episode 301, the Workshop Podcast is now going to be known as Workshop Radio. Slight rebrand. I think it falls more in line. It, I wanted something to separate what we do here from everything else. The numbering will be the same. The podcast feed will be the same. You're going to see some new graphics, some new intros, that sort of thing. But for those on the audio only, it's kind of a play on the workshop logo. It says workshop radio, has a cool little retro radio at the top. Anyway, this has been something that's been on my mind and heart. <laughs> I knew I knew I'd get Aaron. I'm so glad. I wanted to scare somebody. That's what I do, right? I just, I do my best to, uh, uh, you know, scare people. Let me see if I can get rid of this logo here first. Okay. So yes. Uh, sorry, Aaron, if I give you a minor heart attack, I didn't mean, well, yeah, I did mean to just a little bit. So, <laughs> so I had somebody on Fiverr build me a new logo. This, as you guys know, has, oh, and speaking of which, I don't have my brand up there. There we go. So you'll see this will change down in the bottom, the Toolman Tim's workshop. So the workshop's not going anywhere. Toolman Tim's workshop's not going anywhere. That's still going to be the channel of YouTube. But the podcast, I wanted something, I don't know, for me, uh, so the tagline is going to be Workshop Radio, the soundtrack to getting shit done. The intro is going to be the same. The intro music is going to be the same. I love it. Yeah. One step closer says, and now you know the rest of the story. And you guys know my inspiration has always been talk radio. Uh, I love the whole concept of getting on the radio and just sharing from the heart or interviewing other people. And with the massive success of the Workshop Radio Live that we did at New Year's and a couple of months ago with Nicole, we're going to keep doing those. We're going to probably change the name up just a little bit. I don't know if you guys can come up with an idea of what to call that. I'm, I don't know. Anyway, maybe we'll call it a Workshop Radio Marathon. I'm not sure. But I love the idea of radio. Everybody calls their shit podcast. I thought, how are we going to rebrand this a little bit to make it fresh and to kind of more closely align with what I do and what I like to share. So going forward, all I'm going to do is replace workshop, the workshop podcast with workshop radio. I'm excited. Who doesn't love a good rebrand? Uh, it's going to be fun. So sorry, Aaron, uh, if I scared you just a little bit, the podcast isn't going anywhere. We're going to hit 500 episodes uh, within a year. Yeah. So we're going to be there, but uh, it's going to be the workshop radio going forward. And yeah, so thank you. I do miss Paul Harvey as well, Rachel Brown. I always used to get those clips. They were on uh, FM talk radio 
they would replay his little, what was it, like three to five minute where he'd fill you in on something. He was, and he had a voice for radio. I don't know why I live stream because I have a face for radio, but here we are. So glad you guys love it. That's the first one. Okay. Now, number two, the workshop workshop. This has been the worst kept secret ever. I mean, I've basically let the cat out of the bag a few times. We've talked about it. Well, it's happening, baby. <laughs> so the dates going to give you all the information. So I'm going to throw a bunch of shit at you today, guys. There's a bunch of things happening, but I wanted to save it all. I know I've kind of linked some, leaked some of it out while you guys have been listening to Becky and I as we've gone live a few times, but the workshop workshop, first off, the big speaker is going to be Nicole Sauce. She offered to come up and speak. I've been to her event twice now and I loved it. Uh, this will be her first international speaking engagement, which sounds really funny. But I'm excited to have her up. Uh, I've also talked about uh, Chris Dixon's going to be here. Greg from Apocalypse Preparedness School is going to be here. Becky will be doing a presentation. Uh, I'm going to see if I can talk my brother-in-law Barrett into doing one on mechanics. If you're coming and you want to speak, there'll be a discount on your ticket price. So deal is it's going to be th three days, two nights. Uh, event's going to cost $200. Uh, to hold your spot, it's going to be a $50 deposit. Uh, limited to 30 attendees for now. If we get 30, I, I won't say that I'm not going to not open it up to a few more. We're going to start with 30 and see where we go. So tickets are going to go on sale Tuesday morning at toolmantim.co uh, at, let me see, 9, what did I write down? Yeah, anyway, Tuesday morning, May 9th, 9 a.m., they're going to go on sale. So go on there. You can do PayPal for your deposit. $50 deposit will hold your ticket. You can pay the rest however you want when you get here. I'm excited. It's going to include food and all the crazy speakers, hand on, hands-on demonstrations. There'll be some swag for you. I am excited. <laughs> what else can I say, guys? This has been a long time coming. I went to Nicole's event last year in my mind saying, when the workshop gets big enough, we're going to do something. Yes, Rachel said, to Becky doing a presentation. That's awesome. I, I'm proud of her. That If you didn't hear, she got up, she shared her story at LFTN, which is like, they give you five minutes to just tell your story. Last year, she was a wallflower sitting back, not nervous, but just didn't know what to think of everybody. This year, first off, she gets up five minutes, gives a talk, then does a one hour, uh, what they call salon, which is basically a round table discussion. She gets four other women with her. She does a whole hour on uh, female entrepreneurship. So also Nicole uh, talked to Becky about doing a three-person female entrepreneurship roundtable at Self-Reliance Festival in October, which means she's coming with me to Self-Reliance Festival as well. Eventually, I'm just going to retire and I'll let her do all the talk and it'll be way more fun that way. Plus, she's way prettier than me. You know how it is. So anyway, um, the event, if I didn't say August 4th to 6th, it's going to be here in Provost. I'm still working out the details, but you know me, I believe in announcing and launching and figuring it out on the way. Okay, what else do we have? This fall, keep an eye out. If you would like to be added to the wait list or the information list, this fall, once I'm back from Tennessee, I'm going to be doing a 10-week online public speaking course. It's going to be very similar to like Nicole's fermentation, cheese making courses, that sort of thing. The whole idea is we're going to be doing some of it live. You're going to be doing some public speaking over live stream. And in the end, we're going to figure out a way to set you up with a local public speaking engagement. Uh, you know, it could be for three people at your local library, whatever it is. But that's going to be the final uh, final exam for your course. I'm going to teach you all the basics. Basically, the idea is I'm going to empower you with information. And it's going to help you break through that fear. Because 99% of learning how to public speak or just being a better communicator comes from just friggin' doing it, putting the reps in. So if you're interested, reach out to me, let me know. I'll put you on a wait list. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give people information when I have cost and time and all of that coming up. What's next? Oh man, we have got a lot in the pipeline, guys. So I'm going to be a guest. Uh, at least I'm 99% sure I'm going to be a guest on Brian Alexovich's show on Monday night. And we are going to be talking about anything and everything. But officially the second batch of the Workshop Silver Rounds are coming out. It's going to be a, uh, an ounce and a half set again, one ounce, half ounce. It's going to be the inversion of last year's design. It's going to have 2023. It'll be the only print of the 2023s. 
Members of the Patch of the Month Club are going to get first dibs on it. So you have until, where did I write it down here? Monday night at 7 p.m. to message me on social, message me through email, whatever, and say, hey, I would like a set. We'll hammer out the details beyond that. But I wanted to give anybody in the Patch of the Month Club or anyone, so they'll get first dibs. Then second dibs will go to anybody who bought some last time. And then if there's any left, we'll open it up to everyone else. Going to be the same amount. We're going to end up with, I think it's around 30 sets, something like that. So I don't expect they'll last very long. Pretty sure Brian is almost out of his already. And I don't know if he's even officially announced it. One step closer says the new delinquents challenge coin. Guys, I got, I, I've talked to our silver guy quite a bit. I have so many ideas for some cool coins coming up. We'll do a challenge coin 100%. Also, I want to do like something like, I think I've talked about this, post-apocalyptic currency or the end of the world coins. I don't know what they'll be, but it'll be like a four coin set, you know, y Y2K through COVID and all the end of the worlds in between. Should be a lot of fun. So we'll get there. It'll probably be something we do over multiple years, three or four years, something like that. Also, I met a lady at LFTN who does custom pottery. I've been talking to her about doing a custom workshop mug. Not sure pricing or availability yet. Just wanted to let you know that that is going to be happening at some point. I'm going to get her to do a custom design. This will be a one-off. The mugs will only be available for a short period of time. I really like them. I bought one of hers from LFTN. It works just as good for coffee as it does for old fashioned. So you can wake up with it. You can go to sleep with it. Just don't fall asleep with it on your lap. So from there, what else? Uh, so of course, all these great ideas come from Becky and I spending roughly 70 hours driving down to Tennessee, back up through together. We just had a lot of time. So let's see, 70 hours. She slept for 55. So we had about 15 hours where we were actually able to talk, but no, I'm just kidding. I bust her balls a little bit, but tons of great ideas. Out of this trip, Becky decided that we're going to launch a second daycare in a city an hour away from us. There is some incredible incentives from the government right now that almost makes it impossible to turn the idea down. But our goal, and I will not begrudge any one of this, is to become independently wealthy from this. So we're just going to keep launching projects and businesses and keep buying properties until we can live off the income. And then we're going to travel around, see everybody have all kinds of chihuahuas, prep our asses off, build our land in Tennessee. You guys know all of that, but that's what we're heading toward. And I want everybody in the workshop to want to do the exact same thing. Build the life you want to live so that you can do exactly what you want. Byron Roberts, how the hell are you, man? Great to have you again. What else did we do? Let's see if I missed any other announcements for you. Hey, oh, Hunter's here. Good to have you. Uh, we're going to rebrand the truck. So you guys have probably seen the uh, my silver truck at events at this point. It's been at all the events with me that I've driven to. It says all seasons maintenance on it. All seasons maintenance is gradually being folded up. It's kind of sad to see that happen or nostalgia anyway, but that business has turned into all these other businesses has turned into property management and the odd job handyman stuff is just not uh, happening anymore because we're so busy with everything else. So <laughs> we're uh, we're going to rebrand it. Uh, Becky wants me to put Toolman Tim on the truck. So you should, by the next time I'm there, I'll have the new logo on the truck with some QR codes on the back, including Lightning, uh, PayPal, and the website so that, you know, if people want to buy shit at the events, hey, go ahead and scan it. Anyway, it's going to be fun. I'm excited. Uh, also, Becky said, since... I'm not the greatest at sending emails to companies and that sort of thing. She's going to set up a specific Toolman Tim workshop email address through Gmail or something. We'll get it worked out. She's going to start reaching out to companies for me just because I like making content. I like talking to you guys. I like working. I like filming. I like editing. But I'm not exactly uh, the best at always going after emails. So <laughs> uh, Chicken Hawk says, and my big head is the logo. That must be nice, I tell you. <laughs> It's good to have you, Chicken Hawk. I haven't seen you or haven't seen you in a bit, but I've been on the road everywhere. So. so I think that was all the cool announcements for now. I'm sure that I forgot a few things, but we'll get back to it. So 
Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about, we're going to talk a bit more about the road trip because I've had time to reflect on it, even though it's only been a day. I'm going to share with you what I got coming up over the next three weeks, and then we're going to take a look back and forward at what we have going on here in the workshop. So first off, the road trip was crazy. Uh, I don't know why we always have interesting stories. I was talking to James from the Prepper Broadcast Network today, and he said a person has to get out and travel and do things because that's where we get the experience. It's where we get the uh, the stories to come back and share. It's where we get the real world lessons on doing shit, learning, failing, and then doing. So this trip, guys, if you don't know, I mean, I talk about all the time how crazy the weather can be up here. It's no joke, okay? So we left on 420. You can't forget 420 because, well, you know, it's the pot day, uh, the smoking day, whatever, you know, everybody gets high on that day, except for me. I was driving in a blizzard, so it had been exceptionally warm, like I told you, for a long time here. Everything had almost melted. Now, I made a few mistakes. We're going to talk about it, but tonight's title was kind of subtitled from a blizzard to a wildfire. So 420 was a blizzard, 5-5, can't forget that because that's Alice and Charlotte's birthday. They turned up. They turned 13 yesterday. So I love my little girls. I got home. We got home around supper time on their birthday. Give them some surprise prize, presents. And it was just awesome to see them. So my little girls are now 13. Anyway, so from 420 blizzard to a 5-5 wildfires all over the province. We've got 25,000 people in evacuations. Uh, I drove by four extinguished wildfires between Edmonton and home. Two and a half hour drive. We'll talk about that. So what were the highlights of the trip? Why do I, why do we spend the money to go on these trips? Well, first off, it's for community. Uh, it was worth every penny last year when we first went to Nicole's. When you meet people in person, it is just, there's something powerful about getting together. Uh, when you, 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 you feed off each other, what, what, however you want to look at it, there is energy in each other's conversations. There's energy in being around a bunch of get shit dunners. You know, what is this month's patch? Um, doers are better than donters. And when you put a whole bunch of doers in one area, you can't leave without being jazzed up, motivated, excited as hell to go home and do great shit. And I get recharged by talking to other people and hearing their stories. It's just, I love it. Like I, you guys know, I so I rented a place to a guy tonight, and he, he owns his own house back where he lives, but he, he moved here for work, and he's buying some properties, and we get talking, and ask me where I went and what I did, and all I wanted to do was hear his story, and he wants to start a business, and I love hearing people's stories. So when I go places, you know, don't ever be scared to come up and say, oh, I, I want to tell Tim whatever, you know, whether he motivated me or whether I got out there and did shit because you guys did that shit and I want to hear it because that's what gets me jazzed up. Now, am I tired at the end of the day? Hell yeah. Do I have to sneak off once in a while and find 10 minutes of solitude somewhere else? Yeah, I do. But it's absolutely the best thing to get together with a bunch of like-minded folk because it just charges up your batteries. It's worth it. Do it. Uh, now, <laughs> when we take these road trips, we come up with some interesting things. And so I told you that first one, 420, the blizzard was insane. Now, what was the big mistake I made? The big mistake was I looked at the weather for Provost, my town, and I looked at the weather for Minot, where we were going to stop. And I thought, okay, looks good in both places. We should be good. I wake up in the morning, there's a dusting of snow on the vehicle. I'm like, well, whatever. It's going to melt on the pavement because the pavement's warmer. We start driving. And you've heard me tell this story. It gets worse and worse and worse and worse until we're halfway between Saskatoon and Regina. That name makes me giggle every time. And I don't remember the exact number, but seven or eight transport trucks off the road. The traffic's coming to an absolute stop. 50 or 60 transports are all pulled off the side of the road. We pull into this little podunk town. And to be honest, I was a little bit on the panic side. Uh, you know, we get up early. I always love getting up. And I don't mean panic, panic, but just the, I'm not quite sure what we should do yet. So we pulled over. We rested for a few minutes, went in, used the bathroom, got a drink. And Becky said, you know, I think we should just make some more miles. And she was right, but it took me a little longer to admit it than she was because we were doing ourselves no good sitting in this big group of traffic where <laughs> we are, 
I mean, like I said, and here's the thing. So we sat there and we started gathering information. As soon as we pulled up, we stopped. Some lady with Ontario plates in a car that wouldn't handle the weather very well come over to me and she's like, what am I supposed to do? And I'm thinking, I'm not trying to be a dick, but I don't know. What do you want me to tell you? She's like, well, I've, I've got so far to drive today and I'm, I, I don't I don't know exactly. We're going to sit here and try to get some information. So anyway, she got back in her car and looked at her map and I went inside and I started talking to truck drivers. And so what I noticed was all the traffic heading south was stopping, but all the traffic coming north was continuing on, which told me that the guys coming from north were a little more confident than the guys heading south. That means they were probably driving on better conditions. That was number one. Number two, I knew we, well, Becky knew we weren't going to be staying in that little podunk, shitty little hotel that probably had bed bugs or something because there was nothing there to stay at anyway. And it was still early in the day and we didn't want to get behind in our trip. So talked to some more truck drivers. Some were coming in kind of Southwest, uh, Southeast. They said, yeah, the roads aren't that bad. And again, the traffic coming toward us was continuing on, which meant they probably weren't as concerned about the weather or didn't know what it was going to be like further on. So we decided that sitting there was only going to get us, the roads were only going to get worse. So it was time to make miles. So we just started driving. And guys, I've driven in worse or at least as bad. And I have confidence in driving. The problem is, is when it hits you out of the blue like that and you haven't had a lot of sleep. Ah, anyway, it just gets kind of shitty for a bit. Uh, Chris Dixon says he, he can't count how many times he hasn't looked at the road forecast. It happens. And Martinson says we were getting texts that the highway was closed, but I was busy driving. <laughs> exactly. That's where it comes from. So with shitty weather, we pulled over, we gathered information, something else we learned. You guys may know this, but if you look at Google Maps and you start going further along, it shows you blue means the traffic's moving at average or you know normal speed. Orange means it's slowing down. Red means it's basically come to a stop. So you can basically see what the road conditions are based on the speed of the traffic. That helped quite a bit because we kind of scrolled ahead a bit and we realized, hey, traffic's moving at a decent clip. So we just kind of put it along at 50 kilometers an hour in four wheel drive. Always make sure you have lots of windshield washer fluid. And what we did was we picked one town at a time. Becky would look on the map. She's like, okay, next town's 15 kilometers away. We're going to drive that far. If it's no worse, we're going to keep going. If it's worse, we're going to pull in and stop. So we did that. And we just kept going and the road gradually got better. It never got great until we were almost to the American border. Then we got hammered that night and we decided the hell with it. We already drove a whole day in nasty weather. We had all kinds of time to kill. We just stayed and enjoyed the hotel in Minot for the night and then went on the next day. And it was great. Now, lesson I learned from that. If I'm taking a long trip, look at every town in between or pick three or four towns so you get an idea. If we'd have done it right, if I'd head it straight south instead of east first, I think I probably would have missed the weather. But because I was too excited to get on the road, I got ahead of myself. We always do that as preppers, but no, sorry, I shouldn't say we. Don't include everybody in this, Tim. It's you. But <laughs> when I get excited to do things, sometimes I forget some of the basics. We all do that, right? So that was the first. Um, that was the 420 Blizzard the trip ended with the five, five wildfires. So we're pulling, uh, I went and saw Chris Dixon and it was, I don't know, a four hour drive from where Chris's place to where we were stopping for the night. The last stop, I made it in about three hours and 15 minutes. I was getting kind of tired of being on the road. And as we're heading up, you can start to see smoke. You can start get where you're starting to get weather network alerts saying, Hey, there's fires. Be careful. We can see smoke in the distance. By the time we got to our hotel, we hadn't actually seen a fire or anything, but the talk was all, all over town. Everywhere you went, be careful. There's wildfires, there's evacuations. And again, we had to plan where are we going to go. Now, we know the road that we we're heading this time really, really well. Two and a half hours from Edmonton to home, heading straight east, except for a half hour where you go south. The guy said, hey, the area you're going through has had active wildfire. So I downloaded the active wildfire map. I did my due diligence. When we put it into GPS, Google Maps will tell you if there is uh, bad weather or, um, sorry, travel advisories or closures or anything like that. I checked the map. We checked everything. Also, we know that there are multiple, multiple highways 
every 40 to 50 kilometers heading east that allow us to go due south to the next highway. So the good thing about the wildfires so far, knock on wood, is that they haven't spread to be huge. They're small. So they're not going hundreds of kilometers and taking out the next highway or anything like that. They're just small patches along the highway. So as we're driving, uh, I counted four contained or extinguished wildfires. The first two, you could get in a picture. So I snapped a picture and we had it. The next one, I took a video as I drove along, about 15 seconds. The third one, or the final one, was around 45 to 60 seconds it took to drive along the whole thing. Now, these all come from the train lines. You can see right where they start. They're all along there because right now, this is the worst time. If you're like, why would wildfires be crazy in the spring? Because all the dead vegetation is still there. It's tinder dry. I'm not exactly sure what's, you know, there's been a bunch of things that came. You know, the snow stayed late and then it melted fast. The ground is dry. Nothing's greened up. So what has to happen is the greenery needs to come in and kind of push out the dead grass hasn't happened yet. So every little spark that comes off a train wheel can turn into a fire. Anyway, the fourth one was really bad. It went quite a ways. It burned up a telephone pole, or at least it, it damaged the, the lines that were attached to it. But we had water in the vehicle and we had alternate routes and plans to take, um, to turn around if we needed to. And also we knew, uh, we also get as much information as we could. So that's what we handled. <laughs> so we started with a friggin' blizzard and we ended up with wildfires. Uh, Martinson says, lost the coolant lines to the rear heater halfway. Nice fella, give me a pile of his water jugs for emergency labeled and dated. Right on. Oh, I hate that when that happens. It just, yeah. I saw a lot of people on the side of the road as we were driving uh, with flat tires. Now, James, uh, if you happen to hear this, uh, I, I have a... No. Okay. How do I want to put this? Now I love truckers. I'm not slamming truckers at all, but there is something that I have noticed that truckers are doing a lot of. I'm not sure if it's law or not. I'm, I know it comes out of a uh, clean heart and, you know, uh, looking out for other people, but I saw something throughout the interstate that I think causes more problems than it fixes. So something I noticed that truckers do a lot if there's a broke down vehicle on the shoulder, they pull over into the next lane to give it a wide berth. Now, I understand that. I do. Because you are looking out for the person in that vehicle. The problem is, is that on a dozen to 18 occasions driving those 70 hours, I saw truckers pull out and nearly cut off a vehicle coming in the fast lane. So I honestly, and somebody can please tell me I'm wrong if I'm wrong, but my opinion is I think you're better off, especially if there's nobody working. I understand if somebody's laying on their back, changing a tire, you need to get over. But if it's just a vehicle sitting there, I think you're better to keep your lane than you are to pull over. Now I get it. I know why you do it. It's done out of pure intentions, but I think it's causing more problems than it's fixing. You guys let me know what you think about that. So that's my hobby horse, uh, high horse, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it for the evening. I wondered about that. Arizona Renaissance man says, it's a lot to move over in Amazon. Key is if it's safe. That's the problem. Uh, so Chris Dixon says it's in the new training up here as well. I get it. Like, I know when they pass these rules and these laws that they think they're helping and I get it. I saw way too many times that these guys cut over quick. You know, did they do a shoulder check or not? I don't know. It doesn't matter. But either the person behind them had to slow down quick or even swerve to get out of the way. I know where it comes from, but I honestly think it's creating more problems than it's fixing. So, and Aaron says she thinks it's law in Illinois. And holy shit, there's Renegade Butcher. Good to have you. <laughs> Great to have you, actually. And um, yeah, Arizona says most of the time they just move over and don't look. And that is exactly how I felt about it. Because again, it's just something else they do. So now it's in their head that if they see a car, they pull over. They don't. And so anyway, enough of my bitching about that. But I did. I saw a lot of close calls that wouldn't have happened if they hadn't have done it. So I honestly think it's probably creating more accidents than it isn't. The two nasty accidents we saw in 70 hours of driving on the interstates 
were both transport trucks. You know, uh, we saw a few fender benders of vehicles around cities and stuff, but the two big accidents were I saw a truck go off the highway in uh, Tennessee. Well, sorry, it wasn't there when we went down. Coming back, it was. They flew off the road right up through somebody's driveway and just nailed a telephone pole. The whole front end caved in. The guy looked like he was fine, but yeah, there was that. And then uh, in the Dakotas, I'm guessing he either fell asleep or hit a bump. But he kind of, there was two overpasses side by side and there was a big gap between them and he must have kind of clipped the guardrail and went right down just like he parked it there. Again, looked like the dude was okay, but it was what it was. So um, yeah, Aaron says they're not supposed to pull out in front of people and Chris Dixon says common sense needs to prevail, but I was only following orders. Yeah, you are absolutely right. And uh, oh, hey Haas, great. Um, says class A. Uh, license holder. Haven't been driving for a few years, but you are supposed to stay in the slow lane unless in an emergency. In the States, trucks are only supposed to be going 55 miles per hour in California. Something I noticed in uh, Montana, which was kind of cool, trucks were limited to 70 miles an hour, whereas cars and regular four-wheel vehicles could go 80. That was kind of cool because in, uh, I see Nate wants to be, yep, I got you on the list, brother, for silver. Thanks for messaging me. Uh, in Ontario, most of the trucks are governed to like 105 kilometers an hour and you'll get one doing 104, one doing 105. They'll pull out and they'll sit like that for miles and miles. Anyway, but yeah, so I get it. I understand it's probably a law in a lot of places, but I really do think that it's going to hurt some people. Did I mention this bourbon is very tasty, kind of a caramelly finish for what it's worth. So what were our highlights while we were on the road? I've told most of these stories, so I'm just going to brush by them. But if you're here and haven't heard the story, uh, we saw a monkey <laughs> in the drive through at McDonald's. We were waiting for our uh, Diet Coke in the morning, and the car in front of us was taking forever. And we, I was starting to get a little ugly. I'm like, what the hell's going on? And then Becky says, I think there's a monkey in that car. Sure enough, the lady had a pet monkey still in its diaper. <laughs> so it pulled ahead. We followed him. And uh, I, I stopped and talked to the lady. She let us pet the monkey and it played peekaboo with us. But it's not every day that you see a monkey in a McDonald's drive through Let's put it that way. Um, ah, yes, that's right. Civil, you're right. So yeah, Civil Defense says the Ontario thing really only applies to Ontario-based trucks. Trucks from elsewhere still bomb it at 120, making it extra dangerous. Yes, I forgot to mention that. It is only in Ontario. And uh, we used to have that between London and Sarnia quite a bit when we would drive that way. Uh, so secondly... So the monkey was pretty cool. I met a guy. Oh, right. Rachel wants to know what bourbon it was. Here it is. I wish that light would. Let's see if we can get. There you go. 10-year Henry McKenna bottled and bond. It is uh, 100 proof construct, uh, single barrel. And it is one of the sweetest, most caramelly bourbons I've had in a long time. I picked that up in Cookville, Tennessee. Really nice guy down there. Could barely understand a word he said. He was a quiet talker and he mumbled like this when he talked like this, but he was a walking encyclopedia about bourbon and he hooked me up with it. So great dude. Uh, next, I met a guy named, of all things, Jim Cook at Waffle House in Kentucky. We stopped, <laughs> told the story, got our pictures taken with Waffle House hats on. The guy bought our breakfast for us as a pay it forward thing. And I went over and introduced myself. Actually, I just talked to him and he said his name was Jim Cook. And I said, no shit. My name's Tim Cook. We had a great conversation. Then he followed me to the gas station and said, hey, do you want to save 30 cents a gallon? Paid for my gas with his credit card. And then I paid him back in cash because he had a special credit card. One of the most crazy, insane stories that I've ever had happen to me. Uh, I already talked about getting together with our people, as Becky called them, last year. And it stuck because, like I said, it's awesome. Anyway. It, it, yeah. Uh, Carrie says that's a way cool, uh, synchronicity. It blew me away. I keep meaning to call my dad and tell him cause he has a brother named Jim Cook, my uncle I haven't done it yet. So I probably should, but it was just one of the weirdest, craziest, randomest things that could ever happen. Because I mean, we could have stopped at any waffle house. The only thing that we knew that day was Becky said, honey, make sure you stop at a waffle house before we get too far North or you're going to be sad. <laughs> we got up really early that morning, started, drove about three hours, stopped at a random one in Kentucky, and the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, speaking at LFTN, guys, was awesome. I 
love speaking uh, at events like that. And LFTN is just so much fun. The um, Must Be Nice presentation was just so, so good. Oh, Renegade Butcher. He's always a smart ass. He said, there's lots of cooks at Waffle House. That's a good point. So anyway, <laughs> the the presentation went well. I hope you guys get a chance to watch it. I just, yeah, I don't know. There's something that just jazzes me up and energizes me. You guys asked me before. I don't typically get nervous public speaking. I did here in my town at the local library. I was not at LFTN. I was just stoked to get up there and share what I had on my heart. Went well. Basically a solid hour, a little bit of time for questions, but not a lot. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, um, Carrie Brown says, hopefully, uh, must be nice becomes a patch. Oh, I'd almost guarantee it. <laughs> that has become our unofficial, uh, no, it's really our official community slogan, isn't it? Must be nice. <laughs> I should get a flag for, uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, that'll be another story for a little later on. It'll be great. Thank you, Rachel Brown. I appreciate it. I don't say that just to get whatever. I just, I fucking, I, I loved it. Every so often something just comes together. The presentation was exactly what some people needed to hear. Uh, one lady, Mindy, I, I just, she came up and she said, can I give you a hug, Tim? That just blessed my heart. So that's why I do it. And I love it. And uh, yeah, I love sp spreading the workshop gospel. It was a lot of fun. So I think I've settled on a name. Uh, I'm going to, I've told you guys, or maybe I haven't, if I have, whatever. Anyway, uh, I'm doing some in-person interviews because I realized the power of them at Prepper Camp last year when I got to sit down with Brad of five times August. There's just something incredible about sitting down face to face. So, but guys, you got to understand it's a lot of work to make 45 minutes of free time for two people to sit down and interview at an event. And I managed to do it twice. I got Nicole sauce. We sat down, skipped most of lunch and did an interview and John Pugliano. So, um, I believe the series is going to be called the workshop studio. I love the name. It sounds really official. It's kind of funny that it's not in the studio, but it's going to be, I'm going to do some more editing. It's going to have a, a higher production value. I'm going to do one a month. So I'm going to be recording a ton of these this summer. I'm going to be releasing them in contagious or in, in uh, contingency with the events to kind of promote their events, but also it's just going to be incredible face-to-face -face interviews that are probably the favorite, my favorite thing in the entire world to do. So yeah, I'm, uh, I, I love it. It was I, both times I interviewed Nicole and John, they both said, this is a story I haven't told anybody before. And there's power in sharing stories face to face. So I cannot wait to share them with you. It's going to be a while to get them out there, but they're going to be once a month. It's going to be the workshop studio. It'll be out in the podcast feed as well, but they're going to be really polished and really shareable interviews. So I'm excited. Uh, Chris Dixon says it's the delinquent slogan. Every time I say it to people, I laugh and they look at me weird. Yes. Must be nice, Chris, to have friends. That's all I can say. And uh, Chris Dixon says, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Ain't that the truth? Yes, Byron, I will. I got to put that on my truck. It must be nice. You're right. I love it. Hey, Chuck Peoples, just see you in here. Chuck's putting out some good content. He linked me in a video the other day. So get out and uh, definitely uh, support Chuck because he does awesome stuff. Okay, what else? Oh, guys, um, I would be amiss if I didn't mention this. Walking the Tennessee property with Brian and Corey and Carrie, and of course, my beautiful wife, Becky, we had a blast. I, anyway, it, when you have friends, like, I mean, deep, deep friends, there's something so special about it. And I love you guys. I love you, Carrie, Corey, and Brian, all of you. It, it was so much fun to go out and get a sunburn on this shiny old melon of mine and just walk the property and dream and discuss and just plan for the future. There's powerful in that, right? So anyway, I, yeah, yeah. I see, I still kind of get soft in the eyes there when I talk about it. It was just fun. Fuck. It was fun. Anyway, uh, uh, Rachel says, John Bush said he never thought about some of your questions before either. If I can do that, guys, if I can find the thing that makes people's eyes light up when I interview them, the thing that gets them out of bed in the morning. And if I can ask them a question they've never been asked before, I think I've succeeded as an interviewer. So thank you. One step closer says my new favorite answer to it must be nice is yes. Yes, it is. Love it. Yes, that's right. Uh, Chuck did. I see that. 
Chuck Peoples changed his name. It's now Chuck Peoples Homestead Medical. I like, yes, we like that. That's good. I love rebranding. Tonight has been a night all about rebranding. And speaking of ducks, here's Pippin right now. <laughs> Cheers, dude, and happy day, he said. <laughs> right on. All right. And <laughs> uh, Carrie Brown says, really stoked to be on this project with y'all. Can you tell I'm all over the place tonight, guys? Because it's exciting to be back in the studio, like I've said, and there's just so much great shit going on. Hey, all right. What else? Um, Here's the thing. Nothing else matters other than my incredible wife and my family. I, you know, I love you guys. I love what I do, but when it comes down to it, that's what I do everything for. And it was really cool because Becky and I, after like 15 days on the road, 70 hours of driving, we looked at each other and I said, you know, hon, I could do this for another month with you. She goes, I could do this for six months or a year or forever. We love to travel. We love to spend time with each other. Sometimes we talk, sometimes we bicker, sometimes we make fun of each other. And we just love to inspire, conspire, and uh, just come up with like brainstorm. And we have so much fun on the road together. So it was a lot of, yeah, we, we had a blast. We, we love, we love taking these trips and this is why we're designing our life around being able to do this shit because this is what we want to do. And, uh, yeah. Oh, Hey, Matt from farm hop says congrats on 300 Tim. Looking forward to chatting tomorrow night. I can't wait to have you on brother. I'll send you an invite link tomorrow morning. Uh, as you can imagine, no excuse, but I'm a little behind in getting those out. So, um, <laughs> Haas says I might be getting the RV bug. Uh, I don't know. I've thought about it, but uh, we did the RV thing before. We really just like driving and hoteling it. We'll figure it out. You know, um, we like finding a hotel we like and staying at it for a week. We love seeing other people. And um, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I I have thought about, and have you guys come up with some ideas? Because I'm, like I said, I'm going down to Tennessee for, you know, seven weeks or so. I thought about maybe uh, a truck box camper. I thought about, I talked to John Pugliano about those tow behind teardrop campers. And he said, wouldn't be built for you, Tim. And I'm like, I appreciate the honesty, John. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I'd love to have something that I could just pull off the side of the road, sleep in and keep driving. When it's Becky and I, we hotel it. Uh, we, we like to do that. But yeah, Aaron says road trips are the best. We love them. We got them down to a science. We just have so much fun with them everything. Uh, so many things. Yeah. So something else guys. It, yeah. Um, Haas says trailer or boondock saves a lot of money. I, maybe we'll see. I, I can't, uh, I don't know what we'll end up doing, but I know it'll be a lot of road time. Let's put it that way. And, uh, Rachel says good husband and wife bonding time. And, uh, Chuck wants to know, so when am I going back down? So the plan is, I believe the day after labor day, Becky keeps saying I should go even earlier, but I think I want to be here for the girls' first day of school and then hit the road. And then I'll be down until after Self-Reliance Festival. Becky will be flying down for Self-Reliance Festival. And the way it looks, I'll be at Prepper Camp, um, Self-Reliance Festival. Looks like the Midwest Preparedness um, event that uh, Spags puts on as long as the dates hold up. We're going to be good there. I'll be at that in Kansas. Yeah, so <laughs> we'll see. And Renegade says Brian does it with his three horses. That is very true. And, uh, Chris, you are absolutely right. You can buy a lot of hotels for the price of an RV and the fuel to pull it. It's forever struggle for us. It here's my deal, guys. We had a camper. We owned a camper for what was it? So three or four years. Oh, and all I did was spend work, time on it. Time, time, time. I never, I think we spent three nights in the damn thing in the three or four years. We spent more money. We put an, an air conditioner in it. It just sat there. It was it was always in the way. It was always work. It was always work, 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 work. So whatever. Anyway, I honestly don't will ever have a an RV again. I just, I can't see it. It didn't work with our lifestyle. Um, Martinson says, we have a tent that covers the back of the Suburban. Haven't used it with the three kids yet. I thought about that too. I wouldn't mind something like that for the box of the truck. The only thing I, th well, anyway, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be really nice. Um, oh yeah. What, um. Chuck People says, uh, come to the saw class at SOE June 17th. Oh, I I wish I could. I heard about that. I think it'll be a lot of fun, but I'm probably not going to be. No, i sorry. There's no probably about it because we are. Oh, yes. Good. Yeah. So um, Chuck says he's going to be at Prepper Camp in Mid Midwest this fall. I said, I want to turn 
prepper camp into a haven for anarchist guys. It's going to be great. I can't wait. Uh, Joel Riles will be there. I will be there. Now Chuck Peoples and a few others. So we'll see. I, I can't wait. And yeah, you know, it's going to be fun. Uh, Martinson says, put a double mattress in your truck bed. Thought about that. I, I might do that actually. Need to have a cover. For, I mean, I have a, so <laughs> I have a rigid box cover. If I put a mattress in there and then the box cover, I don't know if I could sleep on it. Anyway, um, we'll see. And uh, Aaron says a tent over the bed of a truck would be cool. I may do something like that. And then I would just have to figure out some sort of fan or something because I know that old, that box is uh, watertight. And uh, uh, Chris Dixon says a Hutterite topper. I don't know what that is, Chris. You should send me a picture. And oh, One Step said went to the Midwest Festival in Kansas last week. It was great. That is awesome. I sponsored it. We uh, The workshop sent a patch of the month subscription and a DeWalt inflation station there. So I can't, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. And One Step, if you're going to be at the one in the fall, then I should be there as well. Uh, what else we got here for you guys? Yeah, so I wanted to mention the importance of having good employees or good helpers back here. So last year, you know, Becky was just launching the daycare and it was, you know, it, well, there was a lot of stress on us or on her mainly, you know, just because we didn't have enough uh, help or staff yet. You know, she had her family back there and it was great, but we were all still learning the process. So that was that one. Um, and of course I just had, you know, my son who was working, so he would fill in for me and help when he could. But this time we decided we needed to have someone. So first off, Becky's hired a bunch of people at the daycare. Her and Amy have a bunch of people. So, um, and of course, poor Amy and Barrett have been uh, dealing with some uh, extended family health problems, which has made it really difficult on them. And, uh, but guys, I need to shout out to my brother-in-law, Barrett. He's incredible. He did a few things for me while I was gone that was huge. And um, his dad got some, I think, pretty damn good news today because it could have been a whole hell of a lot worse. So uh, anyway, uh, it's I'm glad for Barrett. It's It's been tough. I know it has. So love you, brother. I always got to shout him out because he's an awesome dude. Anyway, um, so of course, Becky has great employees at the daycare. Amy was there as well, which was a huge help. And uh, we hired uh, Nick and Leia. Uh, they're a young couple who rent one of the properties we look after, and they were incredible. Nick, if you listen to this, I think I've showed it out to you once or twice already. You seriously took so much stress off my shoulders. They're going to be taking care of it in uh, this month when we go to Washington. Be taking care of some stuff when I go to Tennessee. Uh, looks like Leia's going to be doing my ride-on mowing for me. It's it's just, yeah, it's going to be great. Um, it's time that I start outsourcing more of this work, guys, so that we can do the shit that we absolutely need to do. So it's great to have people you can rely on. It really allows you to enjoy trips like this more. Um, yeah, Renegade says... Shouldn't be too many bears in Tennessee, but a tent is just as risky. That's fair. And uh, Haas says, love hammocks. I always worry about bears, though. Uh, Ryan Buford, he's going to be at um, the Thrivalist Fair. I'm guessing he's going to be sleeping in a, a hammock as well because he, he usually hammock camps at Prepper Camp. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, oh, also, I got to go to the SOE compound again. Uh, John messaged me and he says, Tim, you're in town, right? I said, yes, I am. He says, come by. We're going to record a podcast episode. Okay. So at some point, that's going to be coming out. We did about a two-hour interview in his studio. It'll be on his YouTube channel, and I'll have the audio to put in mine as well. So that was fun. I always love sitting down and talking with John. We have a blast every time. So next, what the hell do I have going on that I have to get done before we can go to uh, Addie Washington? So like I said, we have 20 days to finish the renovations at the trailer. This is all going to get done too. So it is what it is. Uh, I have a, a dishwasher and a washing machine to install at a couple different rentals, a couple of lights to install for a couple of people. I have to do the spring cleanup for the daycare yard, the spring cleanup for the 12 unit and do my first mowing with the ride on mower. That has to be pulled out. I have to service all that, which is fine. Uh, it's all going to get done. The biggest thing is, um, I need to make a list. So this morning I got up, I made a master list of everything that needs to get done over the next um, 20 days. And then back to, so for the 15 days I was gone, I didn't, I just wrote in Tennessee vacation because that was, I was stepping away from my book. Now I was back today, 
put the important things in there. So today I went to Hardesty, which is an hour down, an hour back, and an hour there to secure a bank property that was an absolute fucking mess. One bedroom. If you guys saw the picture in Telegram, I'm not going to put that on social. Just completely decimated. Somebody kicked and punched a hole in every sheet of drywall in that room. It was disgusting. It was horrible. A lot of emotion there, I'm sure. But anyway, uh, so I got that done today. Uh, got out, got a property rented, got over, got the 12 units vacuumed. <laughs> Renegade says, well, I have a snow plow on the mower just in case. It's a possibility, brother. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, this, this property is going to be a big job at some point. It won't get done until I get back from Washington. Uh, my brother-in-law, uh, Brian, is going to be doing all the push mowing this year. I'm giving it to him. He's going to make the money. He's going to take care of the billing. Uh, it's just like I said, we've got to the point where a lot of this needs to drop off in order to focus on the big things that are going to make us the big money. Um, What else do we have? Yeah, that's really it. The main thing is getting that uh, the, the trailer ready because it's rented for June 1st. We had an awesome lady, Tanya, who did all the painting while I was gone. That's a godsend. So what's left over there so you guys can hold me accountable and so you get to hear about it too. Uh, the bathroom reno is not done yet. That's going to be, I'm going to say three days to do that. The hot water tank needs to be hooked back up. That's half a day probably. Some random electrical, basically changing all the lights out. So I can probably do the hot water tank and the lights in a day. The entire place is being refloored. That's a weekend. I'm going to hire Nick to help me with that. Hey, Filipino Nomad, good to have you, brother. Good to have Mike in here. And uh, what else? Um, I need to replumb underneath the kitchen sink and some miscellaneous. So there's probably, I don't know, there's probably 12 work days in there. So as long as I don't, yeah, I know. Bathroom reno is a swear word here. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> oh, anyway, so it's a big job, but it's going to get fucking done because this is what we are up to. Cabot Porter, good to have you. You didn't miss it yet. He said, wait, I missed it. Well, we're we're 57 minutes into a 60 minute. No, I'm just kidding. Whenever we end, I still got a few notes here to work through and it's been good to have everybody. It's good to be back with the workshop family, my fellow delinquents, right? So hold me accountable. I will be on social more. Uh, well, more than I have been, of course. It's funny when you drive, obviously, you're not on your phone a whole lot. By the time you get to the hotel room, it's either we're going to live stream or we're going to go to bed. <laughs> anyway, you guys know. So, yeah, that was another thing I wanted to talk about. The trials and tribulations of live streaming on the road. First off, all the hotels had awesome Wi-Fi, so that was great. Secondly, we took Becky's HP laptop with a 17-inch monitor. Now, I typically don't like laptops, especially the stupid little uh, trackpad or whatever. The HP was great. Now, it's no mouse. I love my mouse. I absolutely do. But it worked. So I may take a mouse with me. Um, now, what did we do? We also took... Ah, never mind. I was going to hold up my camera so you could see my camera. Don't be stupid, Tim. <laughs> yep, get back to no string. Yeah, I'll get back to all of the uh, social platforms because I've been basically away from all of it for two weeks other than the occasional Instagram post. So I took my traditional camera with me. I took my Blue Yeti microphone. So we had a basic setup. I'm probably going to take a black screen with me next time so that everything can look. Yep. Aaron says I need a mouse for the laptop. I absolutely do. If I get a mouse, I'm probably, here's the thing. I'm going to take a mouse. I'm going to take a second monitor with me. And that's really all I need to be able to 100% recreate the studio on the road. But the other thing I have to do is I have to, and this is just going to be part of it because this is going to be my fault. Man, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Anyway, this is going to be the thing that I do. So I'm going to keep up my schedule while I'm in Tennessee, at least for the most part. There'll be events I'll be at. There won't be a live, but you know how it'll go. So I'm going to recreate the studio on the road, uh, doing some practicing. It worked really well. What didn't work? Um, I didn't love using the camera built into the laptop. I used that. Becky used the one camera. So I ordered a second camera so we can do it. Uh, so we're both going to look the same. You know, when we do our joint um, live streams, she looks pretty and I look weird. That's just the the cameras. It's not us. So <laughs> anyway, I ordered a second camera that'll match up with hers. So we're going to have a great, I'm going to have the setup to do it. But the other thing I need to do is I need to make time to do prep. Um, we had a great time on the road. I love our live conversation episodes, but... 
on the road when we were doing what we were doing, I don't have time to put in the prep to make a high quality episode, like the, the, the prepared episodes that you guys love as well. So that will happen on the road. It'll be fun, but it'll be great to have that second monitor so I can have my notes on one monitor, have you guys in the front here. So yeah, that's what it's going to be. So now episode 300 guys, I've said this before, uh, and I will probably say it a hundred times again. Uh, <laughs> Cabot says, are you sure about looking weird? Yeah, I know. I, I do my best, right? So many moons ago, over three years ago now, uh, February 20, 2020. Yeah. So just before the whole world went to hell for a couple of months, I started what was the All Seasons Maintenance YouTube channel. And I created... I. I spoke community into existence. I started creating content for you folks out there before I even knew who you folks were going to be. Good night, Rachel Brown. It's always great to have you. I always love seeing you in here and appreciate your support. So I created the workshop community in my mind before there was a community. Now, we are the delinquents. We are. Brian Alexovich, I think it was Brian and Josh came up. Maybe it was just Brian came up with that, but we are. And what does a delinquent mean? It means somebody who walks to the sound of their own drum, who doesn't follow what society says, who might be a little bit politically incorrect, but God damn it, we get our shit done and we do it because we want to, not because the man tells us to or anything else. We get out there and we build a business. We look for self-reliance. We want freedom. We create community, find freedom, promote preparedness and share success, Right. When I started, preparedness wasn't in there, but it was build business. So all of that comes together. But like I said, I spoke this community into existence because I knew you guys would, would be here someday. And now we have a spammer. <laughs> Alice and I were reminiscing about the first spammer that we ever had in here. And uh, they said, uh, we we're talking about music and somebody asked me if I liked Imagine Dragon. And uh, I said, I'm more of an ACDC fan. And they said, well, imagine dragging these nuts across your face. <sighs> Old man didn't get it at first, so it was pretty funny. But anyway, so like I said, um, when I first started, we'd have a single. <laughs> if you speak it, they will come. That's right, Aaron. We had a single person in the live stream the very first night. I went back and watched it a while ago. Um, actually, just before I left for vacation, it was the three-year... Yeah, the three-year anniversary of the first time I went live. So that was really cool. Or no, sorry, two-year anniversary from the first time I went live. It was awesome. Uh, so, like I said, this community has built up around 300 episodes. It's way more than I ever thought it possibly could be. <sighs> we also have our, how do you want to put it? We have our slogan, our community phrase. And I love it. I, I mentioned it in the presentation at um, LFTN. Everybody in here busts my balls. Whenever something good happens for me, you all say it must be nice. And that is the way we interact with one another now. Because it's funny, because it's something we believe in, because it's a three to four word sentence that sums up what we stand for. And hell yeah, it's nice, right? It's okay. We, we can be a little proud in what we do. No, we can be a lot proud. I guess that's the Canadian in me. It's okay. What else have we done, guys, in 300 episodes? We've built a Telegram group that's well over 200 members strong, a group that I love, a group that stands for, of all things, getting shit done, freedom, free speech, freedom of expression. You know, sometimes people get occasionally offended, and if they want to get their panties in a knot and leave the group, that's cool too. That I, I hate to see you go, but you guys know I built this community on the stance that was don't steal my shit and don't <laughs> hurt me. And that's it. The rest of it, we're all adults. If we don't like something, we move on. This group is incredible. I love the Telegram group. I absolute, uh, the jokes, the humor, the fun, the, the kick in the ass motivation that we all need. I love getting up in the morning and chatting with you guys. And I love chatting with you guys before I go to bed at night. It you're part of, we're, we're the workshop family. I love it. We've had some incredible guests. Uh, the two that I wanted to point out were two of my, you know, two of the favorites, but the authors, you know, Angry American was a huge get for the workshop. And then to get uh, William Fortune after that, just 
it was awesome, guys. I, I can't, I can't wait. Uh, hopefully to have uh, Bill Fortune back again. I would love that in time for the new book to come out. But I look back and those were some of the highlights, you know. Um, we launched a book club, thanks to Nate. Uh, we launched a ham radio club, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> no, we, sorry, I had nothing to do with it. You guys launched that ham radio group and basically drug me into it, kicking and screaming. And there's almost 20 members in there or 15, I can't remember. Anyway, so there is a workshop ham radio group that I had no part in launching whatsoever. Anarchy at its finest. Uh, what else? Uh, so what is it? Book club, ham radio club. I took a chance ages ago and I did that crazy episode on post-apocalyptic 90s movies. And you guys put up with my uh, occasional episodes about pop culture. And I appreciate that. You allow me to <laughs> express that. Becky and I have a lot of fun with that for sure. Renegade Butcher says, if you can't take the heat, get out of the workshop. And Dixon says, not everyone is meant for the workshop. Don't let the door smack you in the ass on the way out. Absolutely. Haas, you are absolutely right. One Step Closer says, Tim, so happy for you and thanks for the Telegram group. No, thank you for the Telegram group, folks, because if it wasn't for you, I'd be in here talking to myself. And yeah, even though I love the sound of my own voice, talking to myself gets a little boring once in a while. Haas, yes, go on in. Whatever group you want to join, uh, we'll make sure you get the links. Uh, what else? So what are the other highlights? Ha, huh. even our land in Tennessee is now known as the Workshop Gully. We can also call it Delinquent Gully. Some people aren't going to get that, but the people who need to are going to get it. But the Workshop Gully is just great. That came about, again, from Brian, Corey, and I, or sorry, Brian, Corey, Carrie, and I were standing there talking about it. And he said, look, there's that little gully there. And I said, oh, that's what they call those down here. And so that's where it came from, the Workshop Gully, the Delinquent Gully. I believe Brian might have been the first one. He just seems to come up with all the great ideas. Uh, I don't want him to get a big head, so I try not to mention him that much, you know. But yeah, so the Workshop Gully, we named it after that. We're a group of doers, not donters. Uh, if you guys have seen this month's patch, you'll know exactly what that means. But we're a group of doers. We're not easily offended. And we live to see other people succeed. Hell yeah, right? That's it. <laughs> so, all right. I want to ask you guys as we're chatting here. What does the workshop mean to you? What great thing have you done in the last couple of years? But honestly, when you think workshop, I know must be nice, all of that, but what does it mean to you? Because I love, I love to hear that for sure. Um, it's, it's incredible. Um, Mike says, got to run, jump in the shower. I would say, so Mike, if you're going to run and jump in the shower, I would uh, be very careful because, um, Neither running nor jumping in the shower is advised, and I really don't want to hear about you getting hurt, brother. Lunch celebration with wife's family. Have an unbelievable weekend, and crap, congrats on 300. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. You help stretch the workshop around the globe. Chuck says community. I agree. Community is not something you can force, but like I said, you can believe in it before it gets here. You can foster a philosophy of community. Does that sound right? I think it is. But you can, you can foster a a, a, um, a philosophy of community before everybody gets here. You can treat people right. You can always have a teachable attitude. I was standing up at LFTN and somebody, I can't remember what it was, but they mentioned to me, hey, here's a suggestion. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? You need to know this, guys. I always want to learn. And if there's ever a time that somebody tells me something and I shoot it down, Ah, there's something wrong with me that day. Um, hey, right on. Haas says, always learning new things with some awesome people that I will meet someday. Yes, we will all have a big workshop get together in person at some point. Uh, Strong Roots. C Carrie says, this community keeps me motivated when I'm having a mental snag and also saves my baking, bacon when it comes to bidding some jobs. I, I, I kind of, I did a drive-by in the Telegram group a few times over the last few days and I saw Carrie was struggling with a, a pricing job. And it was great because Ken popped in and a few other people and they're like, Hey, quit being an idiot. No, I'm just kidding. But they did. They, they, they helped Carrie get through it. And I love that because we all do that. Um, there's lots of times that I need shit. And I'm like, Hey guys, help me out with this. I need some brainstorming here. Renegade says it means a great group of awesome people, friends and family who are always willing to both reach and learn while also having a good time doing it. <sighs> That sums it up. I guess we'll, no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, no, you're right. That's what I love. And uh, 
Renegade, what you described there is exactly what I wanted uh, and what we have. One Step says, this community is helping me stay focused on building the life I want, looking to buy land and build a place of my own. We're going to hold you to that one step. Um, you better be one step closer to this in a month from now because it means something. Um, I thought about, I, well, there was no way to hold this off until the end of June, this episode, because this is 300. I had to do it when I did it. So this is one of those early warnings that the halfway mark of 2023 is right around the corner, guys. You know, what are we? Um, let's do the quick math here. So we have uh, 25, we have 55 days left until the halfway point of 2023. So it's probably time to look at your goals for this year. It's probably time to say, hey, what am I doing? What's my word of the year? What's my theme? Whatever the hell, you, whatever gets you out of bed and gets you motivated, you better look at it and say, holy shit, we're almost halfway there. What do I need to do? Aaron says, knowing that everyone has your back and knows when you need a push to move forward. Yes. Speaking of which, Aaron, you still need to interview me. Sip on my bourbon. And she's like, shut up, Tim. But it's so true. <laughs> Chuck People says, knowledge and motivation from incredible folks like Chuck Peoples. <laughs> we, I, I believe we had three medical experts on the show over about a six-week period. We had Jake Drum. Um, okay, slide back. Actually, I think I had Donald, the EMT. Was he on twice? Anyway, we had, no, Chuck was on twice. Donald was on once. Jake was on once. So that's exactly what, that's what I love. I, whenever I get interested in something, I want to find somebody who is motivated or who's an expert in something, maybe not even from our community. And yeah, it, that's what, yeah. So we always have people that we can pick our brains, uh, pick other people's brains. So I got a guest coming up who reached out to me completely uh, detached from the entire workshop community. He's a former weatherman, a weatherman who is passionate about emergency preparedness and disaster preparedness. And I'm pretty excited about it. It's somebody that I don't really know. It's going to be a fresh voice that hasn't been in our community before. I can't wait to pick a, a former weatherman's weatherman's brain. It's going to be fun. I can't wait for that for sure. Um, hey, Renegade Butcher says, I'll be sliding into episode 50 sometime here this month. Good for you, brother. I all like, so my presentation at Self-Reliance last year was, was it 23 or 21? I think it was 21, 21 episodes and you're in like the top 10% of the world or whatever it is. So Renegade, you've doubled that and brother, you've come along. I mean, you're, you're great. I love it. Uh, every time I turn on TikTok and I see Nate, I think it's you, um, but yeah, you're doing great. I love it. Awesome. And guys, here's the thing. This is how it works. Renegade reaches out to me. He's like, hey, I'm going to take a big step. I want to be on the expert council. And I didn't laugh him out of uh, anything. I didn't say, oh, nah, you know, no, I give him some pointers and I said, go do it. You're get off your, I mean, you're awesome. I love it. And uh, yeah, I mean, Renegade did it. He went out he wanted something and he friggin grabbed it. So go for it. Renegade, I'm proud of you, brother. I know you don't need to hear it, but it is true. Uh, Aaron says, just did episode 57. Right on. I love it. 57. Uh, Russ and Andrea Snow, I can't remember what episode they're at, but they're getting their butt back in it. They are just, yeah. How many, who else am I forgetting in here, guys? We have so many incredible content creators. Uh, RZ, wherever you are, you're at like episode 4,012 or so. I can't remember exactly, but I love hearing about it. Uh, you know, always share it. Here's the other thing. People ask me all the time in the workshop community, can I share my link? The answer is yes. Now, here's the deal. Because you already com contribute to the community. Now, if you're a drive-by spammer that we don't know and haven't met you before, and you're like, hey, if you give me 15 whatever, I will get you. Yeah, anyway, you know, you know the deal, guys. So, if you're part of the community and you are, you know, a contributor, you're constantly contributing, don't worry about tooting your own horn. People want to see it. We want to support you. And I promise you, if you ever share too much, somebody's going to be like, hey, chill out. But I really don't care. I mean, our group, there is so many messages all the time. I want to get it out there to the point that a lot of times when people share shit, I'll pin it so you guys can find out about it. Uh, Arizona says, congratulations on all the success. Sure, there's much more to come. I feel kicked in the ass to get myself going, killing it at my day job, but slacking at my side hustle. Well, here's the deal. You have a side hustle, which means you're ahead of almost everybody else out there. 
because 95% of the people, okay, while we were driving, Becky said, why don't people start businesses? Because she was so excited about starting this satellite busy bees daycare. She goes, really, right now you'd be stupid not to, because like I told you, there is government grants out there that are incentivizing people to open up these businesses. Now, you guys know how I feel about the government. But I also feel that if there's ever an opportunity to get a taste of your stolen tax dollars back, then you fucking run with it and get it as long as there's no strings attached. So anyway, we're doing it. But she said, why don't people do this? And I said, because it's hard work, even when some of it's already done for you, even when something's 95% complete for you, most people are just going to walk by and be like, eh, you know, it's whenever I'm on social media, it's a lot of the same stuff. And it comes down to the story I told about Morgan Freeman in my presentation at LFTN, but that's really what it is. People, they just, they they would rather shit on somebody doing something greater. They'd rather say, oh, piss off. This is too hard. Even when it, it is sure it's hard, but you can do it. And everybody in the workshop is doing it. And I love to hear it. And the fact that you even have a side hustle, Arizona means that you are multitudes of steps in front of other people. Now, if you need a kick to the ass, if if you're mentioning this because you want us to keep you accountable and get out there and do it, then hell yeah, we'll do that. So yeah, I love, thank you guys for sharing exactly what it means because yeah. Um, oh, Cabot Porter says, TikTok, TikTok, which is also a great Stevie Ray Vaughan song. Time is ticking away. There was a really cool, really dark movie called Fallen with... Oh, what is his name? Um, from training, Denzel Washington was in it, and he played a bad guy who was a, um, it was a bad angel or whatever. And that song, I think it was him in it, and I always heard that song because every time that song come up, you know, the bad angel was around or whatever. But yes, time's always ticking away. And I, I talked to a guy tonight, and here's how the conversation went. He goes, you know, I'm really struggling to get financing for my business. I want to start a heavy equipment uh, business. And I said, well, here's what I tell a lot of people. If you need money to finance a business and you don't think you can get it, then start a service business, save up the money and invest it in the business you want. That's what we did with the daycare. We we financed it with um, all seasons maintenance. Now, that's great. And the guy's like, yeah, I never really thought about that. And then he's like, but but then I need to buy, um, what, what was it he was looking for? He, he had he had to buy a truck and he had to buy a trailer and then he had to buy an excavator because he has the tickets to do it, but he doesn't own the machinery. And I'm like, well, you know, here's the deal. If you talk to some of the guys in the patch, they'll probably give you cash work for two or three days every time you're off. So if you want to work two or three days on your down days, they'll probably do it. Yeah, okay, Maybe. And they said, well, here's an even better idea. Why don't you just go rent a fucking excavator for a week at a time or for a month or whatever? It's going to be way cheaper and you can probably get enough work to pay to get started in your business. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, well, I really want to. But what I'm really concerned about is the central digital currency. And I'm like, dude, you sound like some preppers I know, because really what it sounds like is you're just making fucking excuses and that's okay. I get it. You're not ready. But he said, well, what do you think about that? And I said, well, here's to be absolutely, I'm going to be blunt. And I've already used the F word a few times tonight, but I don't fucking give a care. I'm too busy making money because here's the deal. If you sit back and worry about insert worldwide issue here and you don't do something great. And then that issue doesn't happen. Well, you've lost out now. If you've gone and done something great and then something shitty happens afterwards, well, guess what? You've still built something great. And he said, well, what about a digital currency? I'm like, I don't care. I said, I promise you, if you start a business now and you start making money and squirreling away cash, you're going to be in a better position if anything bad ever happens, right? So stop using it as a fucking excuse and get out there and do it, right? Strong roots. Carrie says, if, if you don't want to do it, then don't freaking say you're going to, I get it. That's exactly it. I know that's just it. That's all there is. And (laughs) renegade butcher says you're fucked either way. You're more fucked if you did nothing. So be less fucked. Exactly. Right. So here's the other thing I heard somebody say the other day, not making a decision is making a decision. And I've tried to internalize that over the last 
few weeks because it's true. Because by not doing something, you're just letting the world happen to you. Chris Dixon says, sitting around waiting for the world to end is already the end. Right. And you know what, what do they say? You know, you want to go over the cliff kicking and screaming. Well, that's, that's me. I mean, if, if something shitty is going to happen, well, it's going to happen whether I sit around and wait for it or whether I do great shit until the minute it happens. So fuck yeah, I'm going to get out there and I'm going to do something great. We're going to build whatever we can build because here's the thing, the bigger the business, the more money you have, the more empowered you are able to look after your own self, your own self-reliance, and you're not beholden to the man or the system. We all know this. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but it's true. And tonight talking to that guy, I'm like, that's it. I, you're just looking for an excuse and I get it. You're not ready. You want to talk about it? Cool. Uh, if you want to talk about it again and you're still making excuses, it'll probably be the last time we talk about it. Simple as that. But I hope it isn't. I hope the next time I talk to him, he tells me, guess what? I found a way to get financing. I'm starting. I'm working evenings, weekends. I'm buying property, whatever. That's what I want to hear. So um, let's see. Haas says that's the biggest threat. The first jump. People are comfortable, but once you make that jump, it's full throttle. You're right. And it's baby steps, baby steps, and then all at once. You know, your your mind is starting to come along. You're, you're starting to, you know, you're starting to look at what you want to do. But once you make that jump, heaven help you. Nobody can stop you. And that's the beauty. That's the beauty of anarchy or voluntarism at its best. Here's the thing. Any shitty thing that happens in your life, it's your fault. Well, you know what I mean. How you react to it is your fault. How you overcome it is your fault. But here's the cool thing. Anything that happens to you, you can also overcome that because you get to choose how you react to it. So the people that believe that the world just happens to them, you can't solve anything or anyone. But us, the ones that believe that we are in control of our own destinies, hell yeah, we can. And so as soon as you make that decision, you wake up in the morning, you say, guess what? I'm going to go out there and I'm going to build something incredible that's going to allow me to make my own personal financial, time, medical, whatever decisions. Heaven help you because there's nobody, nobody in the way. Somebody asked Joel Riles at LFTN. They said, when you come to a big obstacle in the way, and in other words, like a big boulder in the way, you know, what do you do? In other words, sometimes obstacles are really bad. And what, Joel's like, I walk around it or I get a, a bulldozer and I bulldoze through it. He's like, in other words, yeah, it's an obstacle, but obstacles just allow your brain to come up with solutions. So there is that. Renegade says most of the big businesses we know were started in hard times. There's a reason for that, because if you, if you can uh, thrive in a hard time, you're going to incredibly go in a nice time in, in, in the good times. Right. So <laughs> Renegade says it must be nice to have influence on your own life. Yeah. Someday you'll learn Renegade. I promise. So here's the thing, guys, this is the thing I wanted to kind of share with you at the end here. So it must be nice. <laughs> you know that we're doers. We're not donors. Right. But when it comes down to it, guys, we have an incredible community here, but all along, two things. I've always said that I'm always here to help you, that this community is incredible, and also that I want this to be my full-time income, my full-time business at some point. And Becky and I talking about it on the road, uh, I'm on course for exactly what I said by January 2024 for this to be my full-time gig. I'm stoked. And you guys have made it that way. I, you know, I love putting out the content. I love this gives me a creative outlet. I, I do it because I love to inspire you. And I also do it because I love money. And I do it because I want this to be self-sustaining. I want the workshop to reach as many people as they can. And hell yeah, I want to make money at this. You guys know that. That's why you support the, the uh, patch of the month. It's why you buy the silver from me. All of that shit. That's what we all do. We want to create not a closed community, but a cyclic community where all of us Voluntarists can exchange value for value because that's the thing. And I'm all jazzed up because I listened to a bunch more of Atlas Shrug today, but that's what it comes down to. When somebody gives you value, you want to give them a way to reward you. And you guys have rewarded me immensely beyond belief to the point, like I said, where, you know, if you look at my YouTube channel, there's only 7,500 subscribers on there. There's lots of people who have 10 times that who aren't 
making a living at content creation. So is it hard work? Yeah. But guess what? Having an incredible fucking community like you guys, that's what makes it worth the while. I love it. So where do we go from here, guys? What do we got coming up? Well, we got Matt tomorrow from Farm Hop Life. Uh, he's going to, it's going to be great. I think we're talking about road trips actually. So that just, you know how it comes, the, 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 the theme things just kind of come in pairs and all kinds of stuff. So yeah. Oh yeah, there it is. Martinson family says, so when you come to an obstacle, reach for the large satchel charge, no obstacle. That's exactly it. hundred percent. It's great to be back in the workshop, even if it is for only three weeks. Now we're only going to be gone six or seven days total. We might take a day or two and sneak over to Seattle, but the live streams will be up. I'm going to be doing a couple of in-person interviews. I'm really trying to score an interview with Paul Wheaton while he's there. Um, I've uh, reached out to a friend of a friend who's going to anyway. So it, uh, yeah, I really, I hope I can bring back an interview with Paul Wheaton for you guys. If I don't, I'll meet up with him another time, but I'm going to. So there it is. I'm also going to interview Rebecca who founded the Thrivalist Fair while I'm there. I love to have those stories. So that's going to be two more installments in the workshop studio series. And yeah, so tomorrow I got Matt from Farm Hop Life coming on. Monday night, I am going to be on, I believe, the Lots Project with Brian. I'm pretty sure. I think we I think we uh, confirmed it. I'll let you know. <laughs> um, so Renegade Butcher says, helping people is great, but that doesn't mean you have to strive for poverty to virtue signal. There's not a damn thing wrong with getting compensated for the work you put in. That is right. And that is, let, let, yeah, let's rant just for a minute here. That's what's wrong with the world today because people think they need to be mutually exclusive because riches or money are automatically evil. But the problem is the goalposts keep moving, right? So all we know is man with money is evil. But who have who has... What people have done the greatest things for modern society other than some of the biggest business people out there? I, I got thinking about this the other day. And no matter where you stand on this, if you took guys like, well, okay, now Steve Jobs has now passed away. But if you took Steve Jobs, if you took Bill Gates and you took Jeff Bezos, just those three, you took everything that they've done for the modern world, every one of those jobs that they've created, how many, there must be millions. So. You look at those three, oh, evil, evil bastards who have made tons of money. Sure, maybe we don't like them, but here's the thing. You take them and their influence on modern society out like that, how many people are out of work? You're going to sit back, and then, of course, they'll be like, oh, that bastard. He, he shut down his business, and now I don't have a place to go work. Well, which one is it? Is he an evil bastard? <sighs> Uh, yeah, whatever, right? I mean, it's the same as some of these crazy, you know, Elon Musk and um, uh, Jeff Bezos. They're both doing their space programs. That's not something that anybody else could just up and do. They can only do it because they've made millions and billions of dollars. Have they done everything right? No, nobody does. That is the nature of being a human. But when it comes down to it, it's okay to be compensated for what you do. And if there's somebody out there that can't get that through their head, I'm speaking to you. You need to know that you're worth more than you think you are. And it's okay to be greedy. <laughs> and I'm being a little facetious here, but it's okay to love money. And you need to hear that 100%. Yes, Sir Branson, Richard Branson. There's another one. We could probably take 15 of the richest guys in the world. They get shit on all the time. That evil bastard, Henry Ford. Thank you, Cabot Porter. Exactly. All of those guys. And if we took out everything they've done for modern society, including all the jobs they have created over the last century, where the hell would modern society be? Well, we'd probably be where a few people want us to be. That's about all I'm going to say about that. But I don't get it. Um, there's an awful hate for capitalism. And I understand that Modern capitalism is probably closer to fascism or it's some sort of oligarch oligarchy that's in bed with the government, but pure, I, I sound like somebody uh, defending communism here, but here's the deal. Pure one-on-one -on -one value for value exchange is the best system on this planet. It's the best. It's the only thing that rewards people for actually doing something. And again, listening to Atlas Shrug. 
Who in the world is going to spend 10 years putting all of their time, money, and energy into something if they didn't think there was a reward at the other end? There's not many people. And I promise you, the people who say they would do it still wouldn't work as hard as the people who are hoping to get a reward on the other end, right? Renegade Butcher says, I love decentralizing and entrepreneurship, but people aren't evil because money. Money isn't evil. Evil people are evil. Money just makes them better at being evil. Yep. Haas says the <laughs> um, Haas says the country was built on capitalism. And Renegade says, you're preaching Noster now, brother. That's it. I, I can't get away from it um, because that's what works. Value for value, guys. Um, if... It, <laughs> If I do something for you, or if you come to my house and we, we hire a lady who comes and cleans the house once a week, it helps keep things, it helps keep the house in order for us. And we pay her, we pay her well. Uh, when we first talked to her, we said, hey, you need to charge more because she's worth more. She's the same lady that did her painting for us. When somebody does something for you, you they need to be rewarded. You That's just the nature of it. And when somebody's rewarded well, guess what? They want to do more. And it's, it's a mutually greedy relationship that benefits everybody. And some people might say, Tim, you're not supposed to say greedy. Well, yeah, I'm going to because each person is in it for themselves. But in the end, when you're in it for yourself, that's when the greatest things happen. And we become motivated to look after other people and have incredible lives to do whatever the hell we want to do. So there it is. Um, who is John Galt? That's what we come down to. Uh, Renegade, uh, sorry, Arizona Renaissance man says, yep, we need to be greedy so we can be generous. That is exactly it. Um, Jack Renegade says, Jack Dorsey put just put $5 million each toward developing Lightning and Noster. Tell me the guy funding decentralized tech is evil. Love him or hate him. Elon's the same way. And... When you're, when you're a public figure, you put yourself out there for public ridicule, but it's so much easier for the must be nice crowd to just sit back and throw rocks and say, well, if, well, if I had a billion dollars, I'd spend it differently. Or you know what? He really needs to be taxed better so that I don't have to work and I can stay home and do whatever the hell I want to do. And that's what it comes down to. So people are going to be people no matter what. They're going to do good. They're going to do bad. But I, in, no, I promise you, being motivated toward a reward is going to cause and create better things for everyone. Anyone else who can say it, you know, if you want to shit on it, I don't care. Where, wherever you're coming from, you're wrong. Because this is what makes the money makes the world go round. Being rewarded. What, how is there any better life than to have a purpose and a passion in your life to get out and do something great and then get fucking rewarded for it. That's exactly why we do it. That's why basketball players play basketball. That's why they put their entire life into it to be rewarded with a championship, but also hopefully to be rewarded with a huge friggin' paycheck. And some people say, well, it must be nice getting 20 million. Yeah, fuck yeah, it is. Because you know what? I forget what they said, but I mean, Steph Curry, the best three-point shooter of all time, tens of thousands of reps he had to do over the years, right? So when his guys were, you know, when his friends were going out drinking and partying and driving around doing stupid stuff, I guarantee you he was at the basketball court because like they said, um, this again, this was from Joel Ryle's presentation. The whole idea of the pa of being passionate about something doesn't mean you're going to have smiles all the time. Because the whole idea of the passion of the Christ, I bet he wasn't smiling while he was up there on the cross. A passion just means that it's going to drive you to do it. It might not always be fun, but it's the thing that gets you up in the morning, gets you going, and makes you want to get shit done. Whew. So I didn't think we were going to take this turn on episode 300, but this is what the workshop stands for, guys. This is what we do. This is what I love. I think that's a good spot to end it here. Uh, where do we end it? Well, I could end it with, who is John Galt? And I might. And if you haven't read Atlas Shrug, you might say, I don't know who he is. Well, you should find out. Take some time and read it. But I think we're going to end it with, it must be nice. <laughs> Guys, I love you. Have a good night.